David D with you right now. We are still down here at Green Party Convention and we have one of the presidential candidates. What's your name? Kat Swift. Where are you from? San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio. So um, the great people in San Antonio should be very happy that one of their own is uh, buying for the presidency. Um, what has encouraged you to, to um, take a step out and do this for the Green Party? Basically, you know, listening to people who come before me saying, you know, look, ordinary people need to stand up and run for office. This isn't about fame. It's not about, it's about changing society and doing for the people. And if you're coming from the people, you're going to do more for the people than if you're coming from a corporate back background where, you know, people are just handing you things. You know, being from Texas, um, do you have some unique perspective on the world? Especially being in San Antonio, I know I'm out there a lot, so a lot of uh, you know brown population that's dealing with some very key issues. Do you bring a perspective um, from that part of the world to your candidacy, and if so, how? Well, San Antonio is an interesting place because we're kind of we're only three hours from the Mexican border, so you know we get a lot of cross through. We're, they're trying to make the highway through San Antonio the NAFTA super highway. Right. We've dealt with the whole truck issue about trucks coming up from Mexico and whether or not they're safe. And so yeah, we've got a lot more experience with that international issue. Um, and also because we're a military town, we've got a lot of the military issues and the anti-Muslim hatred and stuff you're, like that. You're that, that, home that to the up. biggest media companies, Clear Channel and AT&T. Yeah, and, and AT&T just moved to Dallas. And so, yeah, we've got, you know, our media is completely squelched. We can't even get low-power FM stations. You know, getting indie media up off the ground is next to impossible because the media market is so saturated right. by Clear Channel. And Cox has a little bit in there. And then you've got AT&T, who's trying to take over the Internet. You know, so it's difficult to survive. And so it does kind of give you a different perspective than if you lived in a state where, say, you know, things were a little more liberal or there was less corporate control of the media. Do, do the people in San Antonio, at the very least, do they kind of understand that challenge? I know that Clear Channel and AT&T employ a lot of folks. So is there loyalty to the survival that is provided through employment? Or do they look and say, huh, it'd be good to get off that sort of... Um, Domination. Dominate. Honestly, I don't think most people understand that the media is consolidated and that what they're getting fed is canned stock, you know, same thing over and over on every channel because they're not paying that attention. And we're not educated to dissect the media. And so, in my experience, most people don't really understand that there is a, a problem until you start talking to them, and like, oh, yeah. And then, you know, I think it's there. They're right. just, it's not a real conscious thing yet. Let me ask you, you know, um, you, you mentioned earlier about the superhighway and uh, the trucking thing. Let's start with the highway for people who don't live in Texas. What exactly were you talking about? What, what, what was coming down the pipe or what are you fighting against? Well, with NAFTA, they're trying to build a highway from Mexico to Canada, and it's a straight shot. And they're, so basically, they're going to steal land from the landowners around the highways so that they can build bigger highways and so that they can just move trucks back and forth. Well, trucking gas prices, you know, this is not a reasonable solution. Why don't you just build up the rail lines and make them more effective and useful and faster and upgrade. And so we've what's, been the, what's the resistance to that? Why not build up the rail lines? It'd be cheaper to get around the Midwest. It'd be cheaper to get around everywhere. And what if we had high speed lines and you can go from New York to LA in a, you know, a day or less. Right. You know, it's, the only thing I've come up with is that you've got the, the oil companies controlling the industry, especially in Texas. I mean, we're oil heaven, you know. It's, and so, you know, as a, as, as a presidential candidate, um, what is, what is the, another key issue that you would like to bring forth for people? to definitely, you know, embrace and really look at and hopefully you're able to implement, you know, in your in, in your ascent. Well, the big issue for me is how we treat our children and the fact that we need to stop the violence and the abuse towards women and children and just everyone in general. I mean, we've indoctrinated ourselves to this violent culture and we don't even realize that we're being violent half the time. And 
world, so we need to put some effort into undoing that and and dealing with the trauma that results. Because not only you know Iraq veterans and previous veterans come back with PTSD, and then you go and look in the schools, and all these kids have PTSD because of their family situations. You mentioned during the debate. Um, you gave a quote that you read about peace when talking about the Middle East. Can you repeat that and, and maybe expound upon it a bit? Well, it was it was actually a book, and there, the concept was is that there's if you're trying to find a way to peace, you got to find the block. What's blocking you? What's stopping you from reaching that peaceful solution? Mm -hmm. And so once you work with that and deal with the emotions surrounding it and, and work out that block, that's how you get to the peaceful solution. Okay. If you just ignore that there's this block there, you're never going to find the peace. You're going to keep attacking it from the same angle and you're not going to get anywhere. And so you said we got to find out who's profiting from keeping the tension going. Right, who is making the money off of it, you know? And then lastly, you know, um, if you don't make it into the White House, are you still going to run for another office as a Green Party member? Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to run for city council, whatever I can get my hands on, just to try to get into a place where we can actually implement the policies that we're talking about, instead of just talking about them. And if we want to find out more about you, Kat, how can we get a hold of you? Um, well, all my contact info is at voteswift.org. We'll repeat that again? Voteswift.org. Well, there you go. Kat Swift, I want to thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank good you. luck with everything. Bye-bye.